I don't know who's if anybody's actually paying attention to these guys and watching them when they're drilling. Yeah, I mean, what brought this up, George, was I don't know if you noticed they behind Irene Ferris' house a couple weeks ago. They drilled another one. Yeah, that's a shallow. They put a shallow well in there. Right, but do you know they didn't go more than twenty feet down? That's all. They put two other. The same company did it. They put two other ones in there a couple years ago. So that's the only thing they're going to get is a shallow well. Right. I don't know. I wanted to at some point. I was going to drop a goddamn string down there to see how far they actually went. You could. But I know the other two were down about 18 feet because I was out there when they were drilling them. Yeah. Well, that's, you know what I mean? That's fine. It's just what I'm worried about is, you know what I mean? Is anybody, which it, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it falls under the Board of Health, or is anybody actually paying attention? You know I mean, anybody can go and get a permit and say, yep, we're going to go down 18 feet. But then when you get out there, go 26 feet to bust through the clay layer and be in good water. Well, <laughs> we've had a lot of people drill on River Road trying to find water and there is no water. And what they did find was just, it was very salty. Yeah. So, you know, and they're right beside the river. So the only way they're gonna get is like Chang Farm, you know, with the shallow wells. Yeah. yeah. It's potentially pulling water from the river. That's what you're trying to do. But shallow wells are, you know, any shallow well near the river is gonna be basically pulling water from the river. I mean, how hard you pull it, but. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, another. What's another topic? Oh, Brian was, I forget what they're actually called. But one thing is, is something with this last round of stimulus money. I guess there's something in there for the town could get money for projects. So they're looking at maybe, I don't know what the, I didn't watch the selectmen's meeting last night. Maybe using some of the money for the center of town, which like I told me, it's like, yeah, that'd be great. But oh, where did I click? Awesome. You know. Uh, this one? Yeah. I said, that'd be great, but I said, I, I can't speak for the water commissioners, but I said, I, I would say that's fine, but they're not, you can't get rid of the hookup fee. Oh no, we still get the money. <laughs> oh no, absolutely not. They're buying from us. It's like I said, if you did that, it'd be, you'd start like World War III. <laughs> yeah. So then another option we came up with was you know, use some of that money and lower to lower the homeowner's cost of the hookup fee down to what it was down here back in 84, 85. Yeah, but how much money are you getting? I think it, I don't know, maybe I think Brian said maybe 400,000. But would we, could we, do, I don't know what it's used for, but could you use it to? Extend our loops. Well, it's the yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be better off it's, doing that. It's yeah. not the big thing is is it's not the water department's money; it's the town's money. So it's up to the select board what they would spend it on. You know what I'm saying? I understand, but if we advise, well, them, no. What I told Brian, and then I also talked with Freddie. I said. I said, I would keep it. I'm like, the $3,500 thing sounds fine, but it'd be nice. You know I mean? We could, I, what I told him would be nice is if we could use it all to pay for the whole project, could still collect the hookup fees, but then we could take that money, turn it around and reinvest it in either starting to close the loop at Egypt Road or start in the process of finding another will, which I don't know if they'll go for that, but 
you know, see, we don't know what the qualifications are to get this money. In other words, where is an earmark to? You can use it. I think you can go for anything by itself. But there's another one. Besides this one, there's a, I can't remember what he called this one either. More money? Yeah. That I think is usable for water infrastructure projects that are like dig ready, which I would say our center of town thing is dig. You know what I mean? We did all the engineering. We're at the point where everything's ready to go out the bit. But I'm not quite sure how that one I don't, Brian said something, mentioned something about Friday. And Friday's the deadline to, I don't think, apply for it, but to just, like, put in projects for it. Yeah. So I told him, I said, yeah. I said, put in, look for another well, the center of town project. And I said, a third would be to start closing the loop on Egypt Road so we can have, one, get the better water quality down the south end of Long Plain Road and the south end of Route 5, but also to have a second pipe that crosses 91 in the railroad tracks in case something happens to the one coming up Christian Lane. And then I also told him, I think, whatchamacallit, which was a small one, I think was finish, close the loop on Swamp Road. Connect that back to North Street. I don't know. I couldn't think of any other like huge projects. Well, top on the priority list, as far as I'm concerned, is finding another water source. Yeah, to me, it's two. You got to find another water source, and little... me really is get the one that pipe down Egypt Road at some point. Those two would be high on the priority list. Yeah, which I'd like to know what strings are attached to that grant, though. You know what happened with the pump house grant? I don't think it's. I don't think the first one. I don't think it's anything. It's just part of that that stimulus package that they signed. Like yeah. free money. Yeah. The second one, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, Brian would have to explain it. Like you say, the, the big project is Swamp Road and drilling another well up by the tank. Yeah, well, I would say Egypt Road before Swamp Road. Yeah, well, Egypt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just, I don't think anything will ever happen to that pipe coming up Christian Lane, but, you know what I mean? Well, if it does, I mean, all of East Wheatley is out of water. Well, there's only one pipe coming across 91. Right. Well, there's two pipes going up Christian Lane from the railroad tracks. Right. So what I was looking at is, yeah, if that if something happened from that to that 16 inch pipe from Route Five to the railroad tracks, yeah. you just all of East Waitley cannot get water. Yeah. Right. Not with the systems there for East Waitley. <laughs> right. So by, you know what I mean, by putting, you know what I mean, by putting, even though it's going to be an eight inch pipe up Egypt Road, you'll lose pressure in that and flow, but, you know, you know what I mean, you can at least maintain water to the houses in there. It's, it's important to loop the system that way, I think. I mean, if you if yeah. you got dead ends going down five and River Road, uh, uh, yeah, River Road, Long Plain, you want to loop them. Yeah. Oh, this the whole system is just full of dead ends, but yeah. some of them are just going to be impossible. Like, I mean, George is saying, yeah, is it, could you do it? Yeah. But to get, to close the loops and connect the ends of Long Plain Road to the ends of River Road, oh my God, that'd be an act. Well, there's a, there's an Indian burial ground there. Yeah, on, on the north end. Yeah. And then the south end, you're going to be cutting through all the goddamn swamp. <laughs> You could probably done, have done it uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but uh, not now. Yeah. I mean, maybe the chance sure you could do it, but it, just the permit process would be unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe what would make it easier is that, that fusible pipe now, you know what I mean, where you could just bore underneath everything and seven and a half to actually dig a trench. Yeah. But... I mean, I don't know how far you could actually bore before you had to 
come up and out and start again. But yeah, I mean, it's, it'd just be a nightmare through the permitting and everything. But I mean, at least there are those two. I mean, we could close the loop on Swamp Road and we could get the loop on the south end of Long Plain Road and the south end of Route 5 closed together. Them are, do them are doable. Yeah, we'd have to, like Long Plain Road on the south to go to River Road, we'd have to get a right away or something across there. And if we went down Pilgrim Airport, you know, right down the side of it, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. So there's probably only maybe a thousand feet of swamp that we'd have to go through. Yeah, you got to get through. You got to get and through. They, the they the could jack that and... with no problem. Yeah, you got to get through the ponds and the beaver dams and. <laughs> it's probably some kind of muscle and endangered yeah. something. There's something out there. <laughs> Well, you figure Hatfield went all the way from Route 5 underneath the railroad tracks, and that was quite a ways. Yeah. The railroad tracks is the big part. I was talking with Tony, and he said to get through that 60 or 70 feet on, by Brockway and Smith there, he said, you must have figured that's going to cost you between 400 to half a million dollars to get through the, underneath the tracks only. And I think he said they had to, I think he said they had to put, I think a 42 inch culvert pipe. It's huge. Yeah, they but I mean, they'd like to do it. So hey, you gotta start the process at some point. This would be a long Egypt road. Yeah. So you, yeah, get, you, get, you get to the railroad, until you get to the railroad, it's easy doing. But, we're less than a thousand feet apart. Yeah. What, 600, yeah, 600 feet, something like that? Yeah, it's not that far, six, 700 feet. So, yes, we brought it. What did we do that for? Oh, when Keith was redoing Egypt, yeah. wrote the end of it, we brought it across Route 5 and put that hydrant. So it's, right up, yeah. it's only sit, sitting, what, 50 feet or so shy of the tracks right now. And the other ends, yeah, maybe right four up, or 500 yeah. feet. Yeah, so it's not a big distance. It's oh, just it's you have tracks. a you have a big obstacle. <laughs> it seems it would be a lot cheaper than uh, you know four hundred thousand dollars to do that. He told me the engineering cost is unbelievable to do it, and then biggest thing he said it didn't make sense is he goes, "Once you get the engineering done for it, he said you write the." Mass Transit Authority, whatever, or check for five thousand dollars just for them to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ours I would say probably would be a little cheaper. Is I don't think we're going with as big of a pipe as he did in front of that. You know what I mean? But oh, you, I gotta, know. you gotta you gotta drill horizontally under the railroad and have it everything be sturdy enough to support the trains and everything. So right. This is the engineer just just do a running calculation for you, right? Yeah, the company I worked for, we probably did two dozen times underneath railroad tracks, but everything we did was with steel casing. You know, we used jacks and then dug it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know as well as I know, Joey. We just shove a casing underneath and throw it a pipe, but I'm sure with the railroad, there's a lot more involved than that. Well, they they tell you how big the casing's got to be, how thick it's got to be, uh, if it's yeah. got covering on it. it... But even, well, Maximilian went underneath the railroad tracks at Christian Lane. Yeah. And another thing I got, I've been in contact with Webbs, their guy that deals with chemical addition in that. The state's getting, starting to get real picky on 
where you're putting the, what do you call it, so call it, the It's not really backwash water, but the water that comes out of the chlorine analyzer. They don't want it just going outside no more because something in the reagents is not nice. Are we supposed to go tank it? it? Technically, yeah. They want you to tank it and then have somebody haul it out. So... I've been in contact with webs. I mean, I got to look a few more places, but it's about six to $6,500 to get a setup that doesn't use reagents. They're just probes. Hmm. So you have none of that in the end, which would make the DEP happy. And then we won't get in trouble. So. <laughs> I'm looking at, I don't know, we'll see if there's enough left at the end of this year's budget to buy it. But I want to make sure it's something that's, I don't know what you call it, expandable. Because I know at some point they're going to start wanting me to do pH every day, which honestly, I don't know why I don't have to do it now, but they haven't said nothing. So, <laughs> and what was the other thing? Uh, it'd be nice to be able to monitor the chlorine, the residual out, plus the chlorine before it hits the filters. You know what I mean, George? Remember how many times we like go back and forth when we were trying to, when the thing wasn't working right? And, yeah. You know what I mean? We we're trying to draw water off the top of the goddamn filters and which I guess this thing can do. You can have more than one input point to it. And it's, I mean, Tony went to it. I went up there yesterday and looked at his setup. And I mean, really all it looks like is, um, it's not glass, it's not plastic. It's just the water runs through this little thing and the cell sits inside of it. And it just, it continuously monitors your chlorine residual instead of like this thing where it's every five minutes. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I mean, I'm sure there's some places maybe they're cheaper, but. So it's just a probe that sticks in there that has a constant electronic readout of chlorine levels in the water? Yep. You can get, as of right now, from what I've been talking with him, you can get a probe for chlorine residual, uh, free chlorine, no, not free chlorine, total chlorine. You can get a probe for pH and water temp. And he's look actually looking in new if they actually make a probe for manganese. So it seems like, I mean, the thing can, if they make a probe to do it, you can kind of tie it into this thing. Well, they do it for manganese, but. Yeah, I don't know. That's, he was just looking into it. I mean, metals test is a little more involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the manganese is probably not a 100% accurate accurate result you know what i mean like i gotta do it every morning down here with that hack handheld i have mm -hmm. which you know that thing's not a hundred percent accurate but in the dep's mind they tell me it's close enough <laughs> you know what i mean you're gonna get your number and then if that number changes drastically then you know something happened you measuring manganese going in or coming out with the filters me yeah Going out. Going out. So you're checking the sea removal. Okay. Right. I mean, we got to still, we get it. They take a sample monthly and send it to like the, the machines that actually can do it. <laughs> yeah. A regular lab that actually does it. Metals detecting the edits. Right. It's but like they said, at least with your handheld one, yeah, your reading is going to be a lot different than the real reading. But if, that reading changes drastically, then you know something's going on. 
Right. You've got an indicator that lets you know if your system's working right. Right. That's why I don't know. Maybe they make a probe that kind of does the same thing. I don't know. Because the biggest thing, I mean, especially with with this analyzer, that CL17, it's everything went up on it. It's for the reagents and the hoses and stuff that you got to change twice a year. It's next year, it'll be roughly about $2,000 a year to run it, maintain it. Whereas the other one, I think Tony told me he spends maybe two, $300 a year on just maintaining that. What do they do after we pay? Part of that probe? No, there's a electrolyte or something that you got to keep refilling in the oh, probe. Okay. And then you got to, if it really gets dirty, you might have to change the membrane or something yeah. in it. But the, the maintenance costs are a lot lower, but it's the initial cost of buying the thing. But if you, if you look in like the blue book or that, or the Hawk books, the non-reagent ones are only, they're maybe not only, but they're probably, a, they're less, a little less, probably figure a thousand dollars more than the reagent ones. Oh, and he's also looking into that dim, the chlorine pump too, what's going to be best suited for this system and not and be able to handle that inlet pressure. Well, once we put the booster pumps in there, the inlet pressure should drop right down. It should. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do we know for sure? It should. I mean, you'd think it would. But you're still the big thing is is will it drop? Because now the more I'm thinking about it is. It should drop some because you don't have all the head pressure of pushing to the tank, but you're still going to push through the filters. You know what I mean? And the pump that we have here, and I didn't just talk to this guy, I talked to a couple other guys too. And they say the pump is good for a hundred pounds, but every one of them gave me the same answer. Of once you hit somewhere around 80 to 85 pounds, the pumps really don't start liking it. Which that really is not a huge expense. I think it's, you're looking at maybe a thousand bucks or something for a new pump. I'm pretty sure they're all talking, they're all talking an LMI pump. Like we had for when we put that orthophosphate ortho in. Yeah. Those little yellow ones. But that I'll know more once. I think he said he was getting his first shot this week. And then he said he'd be able to travel around more. <laughs> What's the other thing? Oh, I'll start flushing hydrants. Probably this week, this week, next week. Did you put it on the town website? No. I'll have Amy put it on there, but like when I did it in the fall time, I never put it on and nobody even noticed. No, is it? It's still good now. The only, still the only part that really comes out dirty is from here to Route 5, where me and you flush, George. Yeah. That's really the only part. After that, every hydrant I open, I mean, some, most of them right from the start come out clean. You don't even get that initial brown gulp. Is this since you put out the permanganate system on online or even before? No, since. before. Oh my God. Oh, if you, if you, didn't, if you didn't notify people that you were flushing hydrants, oh, you, you, you found out you were flushing hydrants. So you, could, you could darken up the asphalt and the roads. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it'd make a mess, especially like Deerfield urethane would usually be the first one to call. <laughs> You got me. I, I, while you do, you mentioned DEP not wanting to have you know any worried about residuals from the chlorine testing. So you, you, I just did a search for chlorine <laughs> residual testing. You know, 
things and, I, and, I, and what pops up, but uh, I'll send it to you guys if you want. It's, it's, a, it's a paper called Current Technology of Chlorine Analysis for Water and Wastewater done by this guy and it's dedicated to memory of Clifford C. Hatch, a hawk, hawk, who was yeah. died in 1990, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> as I'm looking at all, and I started looking at it, it's all about chlorine chemistry and, and uh, disinfection chemistry. Because I'm like, what the hell? I mean, you used to everybody. If you go, to, if you're worried about dumping out the little tubes after you do the, the colorimetric method, yeah, what, what's what's going on here? I don't understand. No, they that. want even those now. They want you to put that into these buckets. Well, what the hell's wrong? I was, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna try to figure out what what what's the problem? You know, what's the problem? There, there's there must be somebody must have found out there's something in them reagents we use that that's not nice. To something. Yeah, they spend too much time trying to solve problems that are not there, those guys. Right. They do. I used, to, I used to stop in there a couple of times a year in Boston. And uh, Jimmy Haleva and I forget the other guy's name, there's two guys sat side by side. And they spent half their day just blah, 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 and about problems that, that shouldn't exist, but they made them exist or whatever. They tried to solve all the problems of the water supply business in, in their cubicles every day. And I yeah. got in on a couple of those and I was like, did you guys have work to do? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I'm going to dig around that one a little bit, see what's going on with that. Yeah. Oh, I can't think if there's anything else I had. Oh, I did. I guess I wasn't. No, I can't. What did I do? Oh, I did order. I got, I think I got that list, George. Of the fittings. Yeah. Still can't get a hold of the other guys, but the more I was looking at it, instead of teeing off, like we were saying, I'm thinking we just use those, come off those valves. Well, the only reason is that way, we have ends again, you know what I mean? So we can bleed them out. Yeah, yeah I mean, isolate them. Yeah, you know what I mean? And just kind of what I'm thinking is we take the two big pipes that are up top already, just bring those around at that height. And then the two other pipes that were down lower, we just bring them up top to the same height as those and hang them all at the same height. Did you get uh, Brian to write a nasty gram? I told Brian when I talked to him yesterday that what's my call? I'll, I'll try contact him. I'll send him a few more emails this week. But if he doesn't answer me, I said he might have to. I, I might have to ask you to send one, <laughs> or maybe we got to have a meeting with the select board and you know what I mean see what steps we need to take. Because like I told Brian, it's like. I mean, the thing's done. It's been done for how long? Oh, really? And I ain't just, you know what I mean? It's not just Frank calling. I'm getting phone calls from Frank's boss now. Well, it's just ridiculous. We met with Mike, what, six months ago? And he was going to write been, it up. And yeah, do it had it. to have been October, wasn't it? it September, had, October? It was warm outside. Yeah. <clears throat> So like I tell him, I'll, I, we left it as that when I talked to Brian is I'll try a few more times this week, sending him emails. And if he doesn't get back to me, then maybe if you send him one, he'll answer. And if not, maybe we got to meet with the select board and, you know what I mean? Figure out a route of how the hell do we get this done or who do we call or. Well, he's, isn't he supposed to write up the final report and send it to DEP? Well, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Yeah. I mean, the, the first one is, is just get this damn, get that last pay request out. So the money exchanging hands is done with, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, then, yeah, we should, he's got to write up that. we got to finalize the paperwork with the DEP for the, that SRF loan. Which we already made the first payment on. 
but yeah, you know what I mean? The big thing, I don't know why that's taking so long. Why this final pay request is taking so long. Yeah, he did find that, whatchamacallit, that last one instead of charging Frank, instead of them charging 7%, he charged 10% or something. So Frank had to change his number. But he told me he did that like almost a month and a half ago, two months ago. Yeah, I don't know what the problem is up there. It's just he comes to us and everything will be done right away. And then you don't hear from him for two months. Yeah. Let's see. Did I tell you guys he did? Lucy did last week. She got me the, I guess you call it the bid package for the pumps in the center of town. Yeah. So hopefully within the next week or so, we'll get that one out. You want to see the thing we're talking about? Where's the hard pages? Yeah, so hopefully in the next week or so, we'll get that thing out. think of nothing else to I think that's all I had for now I'll be at the try to make it to the whatchamacallit big town meeting yeah, the big town meeting we'll be the only ones there that's all right <laughs> which I think is I think it's the 10th yeah Other than that, that's all I got for now. Well, and I'll have to catch up with you. I got something you guys got to sign. Just the final water reading thing. Anyway, this is the one that Webb, me and the guy from Webb just talking about. The Hawk one's in here. The Hawk something, CL10, C10. C110. Well, I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Unless you guys got something else. Seconded. It's unanimous.